Now the first of a two-part series looking at the world's soon-to-be most populous country and the challenges of food production. With a growing migration to cities, there is concern that India might not be able to produce enough food to feed its people. Special correspondent Fred DeSam Lazaro reports on one group's effort to restore rural land and communities. It's part of his series, Agents for Change. On a hot afternoon on the farm, Parthi Baraj says nothing quenches your thirst more than fresh coconut water. This 26-year-old was on a path most rural Indian parents dream of for their children, an education and an IT job in the city, far more lucrative than most farming in India. <laughs> First class. But despite earning a master's degree, Parthi Baraj came back to his family farm in rural Tamil Nadu about six months ago. The office cubicle life in information technology became unbearable, he says. I worked six days a week, 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. There was a lot of pressure, very little respect. I had six pack. I had a six-pack, he says, but the sedentary job and poor diet turned it into a... Family pack. <laughs> By coming back home, he's an outlier in a country that's seen robust economic growth, but almost all of it in urban areas. India will soon become the world's most populous nation, but you'd never know that walking in the rural areas, which have been emptying out over the past few decades in a rapid urbanization. And even though this country's population overall is young, Average age just 29. The average age of an Indian farmer today is 50. Even without climate change, India faces a great challenge because of the uh, increasing population and a limited uh, land available for agriculture. Jagannathan Srinivasan is a climate scientist at the Indian Institute of Science in the booming high-tech capital, Bangalore. Uh, all of us have seen in the last uh, 50 years in Bangalore large amount of agricultural land becoming uh, apartments. Yeah, that's a serious concern. Indian cities continue to spread into the countryside with high-rise apartments for the growing new middle class. But the majority of urban migration is into urban slums by subsistence farmers unable to make a livelihood on land degraded by years of neglect and misuse, the overuse of chemical fertilizers and pesticides, and deforestation that causes erosion. About 50 years, no public investments went into restoring these landscapes. That is a serious, serious uh, harm or a neglect. Jagdish Rao started a group called the Foundation for Ecological Security, which has worked to fix that neglect. He brought me to an area about two hours outside Bangalore that has languished for years, says farmer T.V. Srinivasa. There was no water in the tanks. There was no water for livestock, no fodder in the common lands. We'd work here in the rainy season, but when it didn't rain or in drought, we had to go to Bangalore. We went to the city for at least six months of the year. Rao's group, supported by corporate, foundation and some government grants, began organizing farm communities. Groups of neighboring villages negotiated with government authorities to replant public forest lands felled for timber and commons areas. Land not titled to anyone, but technically in government control. Yeah, you see the landscape, it's... Uh... Across rural India, Rao says, millions of acres of these commons lands have been classified as wasteland and neglected. Rao's organization arranged to use a government employment program intended to relieve rural suffering to restore infrastructure, mostly to clear canals and ponds that had long dried up as silt from deforested land flowed down. If we were to have come here five, ten years ago, what would this landscape have looked like? Uh, there wouldn't have been any water here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those trees that you see there mm -hmm. would have been stunted small saplings mm -hmm. because there's no effective governance. There's fodder still, which in five or seven years ago, there wouldn't have been anything. With reforestation, now when it rains, water flows from the hills instead of sand or silt. The result is holding ponds that actually hold water year-round. That serves livestock and also replenishes surrounding soil, Rao says, producing brush or vegetation that can feed larger animal herds in the commons land. Water left over is distributed and shared by consensus. The foundation also brings communities together in exercises to plan ahead how much water is available 
and can it cover the crops individual farmers want to plant? If not, they must reach harder decisions, plant less thirsty crops, or just plant less. But the crux is in actually bringing people together so that they manage these lands better, they develop their own rules, regulations, responsibilities, punishments, rewards. You just have to rely on the nature's potential to heal itself. The second thing you need to rely is the power of people to collaborate. So far, Rao's foundation has worked in some 13,000 villages across India, affecting about 8 million people. He says in time, government officials, who may have been wary at first, have come to see the group as an ally, one that helps them deliver results. There are concerns about equity, whether larger growers will take more than a fair share, but these farmers say they're not worried. The village has hired an irrigator whose job is to make sure that the water is distributed fairly across all the farms. He is paid by all the farmers. And they say having water year-round has slowed migration to cities and in some cases prompted the reverse for literally greener pastures here, a chance to go beyond subsistence farming. 28-year-old Venkat Narayana has a college degree but says he didn't need it to do the math. In the city, I could probably make around 20,000 rupees a month, but here I make about 50 to 60,000 working with animals. I work two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening. I'm in my village, near my family, and I'm free. With an income of about $800 a month, many times the rural average, he and his newly wed bride Bhagya Lakshmi say they can live happily ever after, tending a growing herd of 11 Holsteins that produce about 50 liters of milk each day. <laughs> Meanwhile, Parthi Baraj, the software engineer who decided not to join the urban middle class, nonetheless hopes to cash in on one of its growing demands, organic food. He's raising fish in this pond and will soon plant rice, beans, lentils, and some vegetables. We have eggs, vegetables for our own use, so we don't need to buy those. I've also sold a goat recently and some fish. It will take some time for the business to develop and grow. The income isn't yet what he was making in the lucrative software engineering field, but it's a shot at a lifestyle he's wanted since he was a kid, he says, running around the family farm, pursuing the goats, and now that abdominal six-pack. For the PBS NewsHour, this is Fred de Sam Lazaro in rural Tamil Nadu, India. And Fred's reporting is a partnership with the Undertold Stories Project at the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota.